Hello everyone, it's Jamal Thomas. Welcome to the Progressive Soapbox. So let me just make sure this is loading. It's Jamal, good. Guys, I had to start late this evening. Um, I'm doing something at work that I need to finish up. And, well, it's work, work, I need to finish it. But I saw this story and I had to do it. It was in the Washington Post. Um, Here's the thing, and the reason why I'm doing the story, I found the story fascinating. How do you know who you are without having something to compare yourself to? It's like, you know, what's God if there was no such thing as man? You know, God is not God if he's the only one. It takes something lesser to actually have God. Um, you see yourself in the face of others is what I'm basing, boiling it down to. So this is why I'm doing this article. Not to mention I kind of thought it was comical and part of me wants to stand by my tribe on this. Um, so this guy. Washington Post columnist and suspected porn star, Dave Weigel. And look, I, I think he's a porn star. He never said it, look at the mustache. Nobody walks around with a mustache like that that's not a porn star. That's that's my understanding of things, and I'm sticking to that understanding of things. Um, <laughs> El Pequeño, <laughs> Dave Weigel. Um, in, in column today, in one corner of the internet, the 2016 Democratic primary never ended. This article is fascinating. Like I said, you see yourself in the face of others. There is a clear dis distinction between us and them. That's not a distinction I'm drawing. That's a distinction Dave Weigel is drawing in the article. El Pequeño. That's what he's drawing. Um, it's interesting. That's all. I, I, I'm going to go through the article, but I am fascinated by it. I swim in a particular sandbox. And I read the Washington Post, New York Times, I read all these establishment articles, but I don't watch mainstream news. So some of this stuff is like, I don't get it until I see it in the news. Weigel writes this piece as he's sitting in a tower and as if, he, as if he's traveled to some long forgotten land and interacted with the people and came back and wrote down what he saw. That's how the article comes across. So let's go through it. Oh, by the way, he bashes H.A. pretty good in this article. I don't know what H.A. did to Dave Weigel, but he goes after him. Um, called him a fantasy writer. It was, it was fascinating. On Friday afternoon, a judge in South Florida dismissed the lawsuit against the Democratic National Committee, brought by people who accused it of committing crime fraud during the 2016 primary to the detriment of Senator Bernie Sanders. Neither the D nor C nor ousted Representative Deborah Walsman Schultz responded to the dismissal when asked to comment. Within hours, the attorneys who bought the lawsuit, Jared and Elizabeth Beck, were providing updates to the case to the blogger and fantasy author H. A. Goodman, calling out the people in the outlets who they believed had to cover them unfairly. The Becks described a legal system so corrupt that there could be no fair accounting of what the DNC did. It would be up to alternative media to get the truth out. There's a tone, man. It, nobody knows H.A. Goodman is a fantasy author. He threw that in there specifically to get across he's a fantasy author. This is snarky as hell. That's all I'm saying. That's kind of snarky. Call the man a fantasy author. And uh, yeah, I do think H.A. did write some fantasy at one point. That's besides the point. Nobody knows that. That's included specifically to get across this thing of this guy's just bullshitting people. And, and look, from their perspective, this stuff is nonsense. That's the perspective he was writing it. That's why he threw that in there. This population has been battered by propaganda and misinformation and corrupt politicians for so long, Jerry Beck said. If you go into court and you represent anyone but the rich or powerful corporation, the chances you have of a fair day in court are slim to none. 
More than a year after Hillary Clinton won the Democratic Party's presidential nomination. By cheating! Her opponent on the left remained in a few distinct but overlapping camps. Most like Senator Sanders have remained in the Democratic Party politic to drive the conversation further to the left. Organizations like Justice Democrats and Hashtag All of Us are oriented around primary challenges and bullet pointed agenda. Sanders' own revolution, our revolution, is providing a national donor network of progressives and often ignored local races. I don't like the dividing up of us and them. And not even in the way he's dividing this up between the whole thing of Justice Democrats and all of us and the other people who are in the camp, in the progressive camp. Also, I would imagine the Justice Democrats hate that they've just made that distinction. But for the kind of 2016 Sanders supporter, the primary never really ended. It grew into a defining, eye-opening event, a moment when it became clear that Democrats could not be trusted, were not worth co-opting, were not worth co-opting, that's weird, and might literally be getting away with crimes. Goodman whose devotion to Sanders as a Huffington Post blogger gained a small but dedicated audience, transitions from columns about the Vermont Sanders, Vermont Senators' inevitability, inevitable victory, to vlogs about the truth coming out about Clinton and the DNC. Sitting in front of a WikiLeaks logo, Goodman alternated updates on the DNC fraud lawsuit with updates like, Clinton email grand jury to indict Hillary Clinton under espionage act. Colon. Eminent. And Seth Rich murder anniversary. Marred by Guccifer 2.0 files copied locally, but not hacked by Russia. Well, that part's true. I mean, granted, the, the, the jury to indict Hillary under espionage act is imminent. That's utterly ridiculous. Yeah, that's clickbait. But... The last one is actually true. It's either a flat fact that it's the murder anniversary. And mainstream media cannot get away with acting like those files were hacked by Russia. Now, if they're going to contest the evidence, meaning if they're going to deal directly with the VIP files as opposed to pretending um, the veteran in intelligence professionals, if they're going to deal with that directly, that's one thing. But this is one of those side remarks that assumes that A, it was hacked by Russia. And again, Weigel is taking the mainstream media narrative, even though mainstream media has left that narrative the moment that the intelligence came out or that the um, actual independent studies came out. Yeah, so that one's actually true. And Goodman is one node in a busy network of pundits on full-time war footing against the DNC. YouTube, with its easy use, free storage, and possibility of global reach has become an angoria of 2016 primary bitter enders. Bitter enders, okay. YouTube's previously played the same role for far right. And reporter John Herman's Reed and a many celebrities out of monologists, essayists, performers, and vloggers who publish frequent dispatches from the living rooms, their studios, or field envying vigorous against the political, oh, envying, I don't know what that word is, envying vigorously against the political left and mocking mainstream media against which they are defined and empowered. If you're an independent media, well, and this is Bex, is the case against the mainstream media was to make any way as Bex lawsuit drew little national attention. I'm sorry, this, the wording is weird. If you're an independent media and you didn't think it was your job to cover the underbelly of the DNC, I'd like to know exactly what you think your job is, said YouTuber Tim Black after the case was dismissed. How can you look in the mirror a journalist, a speaker of truth, and not cover the case. People can cover whatever they want to cover. The Baltimore-based Real News Network, which called the lawsuit overlooked, contrasted the lack of coverage with copious amounts of Russia meddling in the 2016 election, followed up with a report on its dismissal. 
In an interview with Elizabeth Beck, TRNN News founder J. Paul J. suggested that even in dismissing the case, the judge had agreed with the plaintiffs, stating the DNC used resources and serotipitous methods to support Clinton over Sanders. Again, that's a flat fact that's true. Th here's the thing. As you're reading this, I mean, it just comes across as I'm Dave Weigel in my off time as a porn star I do writing and as I do writing I'm from a particular position in my living room as I decry people from doing vlogs from their living room but probably in my living room writing an article talking about us sitting here in the Washington Post when democracy dies in the dark. I love that line. I still contend that democracy dies on the pages of the Washington Post. Right in the open. Here's the catch. The truth is, they did cheat Sanders. The truth is that there's a hard time of looking at the Clinton emails. In this article, the items, he dismisses everything. Like, essentially, he would say, well... 100,000 people were thrown off the rolls in Brooklyn. And that wasn't anything to do with the DNC or the Democrats. That was just an accident. Those long lines in Arizona and some of these other places. That was just an accident also. Everything was an accident, Dave Wagle. Nobody did anything wrong. The DNC is blameless. I'm amazed that Dave Weigel. I, this is what I want. I want Dave Weigel to deal with the evidence showing that the DNC was not hacked, but was leaked. I would like him to dismiss it. I would like him to go through it and actually cover it and provide a decent dismissal of the evidence, the independent evidence. What I'm getting at is these guys have pretended as if the rushing hack didn't take place. They're pretending as if, or maybe they're not pretending. Maybe they believe that everything is an accident. The conspiracy theory that Russia was able to hack the DNC they believe that whole hog. Haven't seen squat. They believe that whole hog. You provide evidence for it and they ignore the evidence. Not just ignore the evidence, they don't even bring it up. As it started to creep into mainstream media, the story went away and we were awash in Nazis. I would like for Dave Weigel to deal with the veteran independent, um, the veteran intelligence professionals report with the investigations that were associated with that report. That's the first part. The second part is fair enough on this idea of from their perspective, everything was above board. Hillary Clinton just won. There was no shenanigans that took place. In his eyes, Deborah Wasserman Schultz just insulted Sanders. She didn't do anything wrong. Even though she was head of the DNC at the time, and the DNC is supposed to be impartial in the process, Dave Weigel sees no issue with that at all. She sees no issue with the head of the DNC pushing articles to be published attacking one of the candidates, even though it was supposed to be impartial. This is a very clear distinction between us and them. This is not a distinction I'm creating. This is a distinction Weigel is creating in the way he's writing this article. They are the bitter enders. If you're using the term, they are, with this feeling of them looking over yonder, they're the bitter enders. They haven't given up. They're on full wartime footing with the DNC. That part's right. That part's right. Whatever else you want to say about the article, that part is correct. That part I absolutely agree with, and I am proud of that part. Um, Dave Weigel, El Picano, porn star Dave Weigel. I um, I like seeing this. To be honest, it, it's it gives you this idea of this is the perspective of somebody who's not you like you can break out the people who are essentially voting for sanders and say okay these people are into two camps 
the quote unquote justice democrat camp and everybody else can't fair enough it may look that way but the justice democrats excuse me can't it's the same camp like he's creating a false distinction that doesn't exist they're the same camp dude you're going to have people who are bitter enders who are also going to vote justice democrat because they're going to go with the policies that justice democrat is putting out there is no conflict in the two positions there is no distinction there yes you have people who are pushing to work in the democratic party that's true and you have some people who essentially hands off the democratic party i would argue that those people are hands off the democratic party providing a candidate comes up that meets their specifications now if justice democrats put a candidate forward that meets their specifications at the very least they're going to have an option i don't think a distinction exists but whatever that's Dave Weigel's opinion. Dave Weigel can have his opinion. And I'd imagine from his position sitting there as a classic Democrat, that would be a particular position. So read the article. It's interesting read. Again, this thing of perspective between us and them. I'm. It's somewhat comical in the way he just dismisses everything as a complete accident. You would think that somebody would get together at some point and say, hey, let's try to help this person win. According to Dave Wagle, that never takes place. That never happened. There was no cheating. Everything was above board. All of the anomalies and all of the mishaps and all of the things that took place in the primaries were either accidents or buffoonery. Dave Wagle, opinionist, suspected porn star. All right, guys, I have one more that I want to do. And we may yeah we're probably gonna have to call it a night early but i have one more so i'll be back momentarily <laughs> 